Good evening. I'm Dash, Rick Dash, and this is Rick Dash Presents. This particular program is more of a variety program. We got some great comedians here tonight. Uh, we have some musical talent also. So we'll be right back. I'm here today with Mr. Russ Green. How you doing today, sir? I'm good, brother. Thank you. Well, tell me a little bit about you. Well, uh, I'm black. I've been black my whole life. That's lazy. That's a little bit about myself. Did you want to know more? Yeah. Where were you born? <laughs> Where were you born? I was actually born in St. Louis. Oh, cool. St. Cool, Louis, cool. Missouri. And you attended Howard University also? I did. I came out of there in, uh, several years ago. Ten years now out of school. I've been fighting to get back ever since. <laughs> what did you major in? Computer science, engineering. Okay, cool. I wanted to uh, design video games. Oh, okay. Then I realized I hated programming, so I left. So uh, what got you into comedy, man? Uh, pain got me. I was, I was, <laughs> had a very boring, uh, unfulfilled life. Oh, fantastic. Can you tell me the first time that you actually went on stage and such? <laughs> the first time I that. went on stage, uh, was an accident. It happened real, like, uh, <laughs> serendipitously. I, uh, I was walking down U Street <laughs> and his brother came out and he said, uh, he said, hey brother, you like, you like comedy? And I said, yeah. He's like, well, it's open mic night tonight. Come check it out. <laughs> So I went upstairs uh, at the Red Lounge and I saw a whole bunch of comics bomb terribly. And so I said, all right, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> so I came back uh, the next month. I wrote, uh, written my set, wrote, no, my, that, that's not a word. <laughs> I'd written my set and I've been writing jokes for like a, at least six months before then. And then uh, I invited all my friends out because I said, if I wanna fail, I wanna fail catastrophically, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I did my first set, it was, a, it was a good time. Fantastic. Now who influenced you? Uh, when it comes down to comedy and such? Uh, specifically, George Carlin. Oh, George, yeah. Great, great uh, he, comedian. He has subject matter that I think is uh, very deep mm -hmm. and very dark. Mm -hmm. And he's able to like broach subjects that a lot of people are uncomfortable with. And he does it with such levity. And I, I've always thought that was uh, brilliant. But I mean, it's, it's too easy to just name one. There's a spectrum of comics that I love. You know, Bill Cosby, uh, Dick Gregory. Uh, mm -hmm. Even New Jacks now, like Hannibal Burris, you know, all these cats out there that are doing uh, a different lens of, of uh, American culture, black American culture specifically. Mm -hmm. I've always, except, for, except for George Carlin, he's, he's half black, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a pass from me. Oh, fantastic, Russ. So you will be performing in just one second, so we're going to take a station break and we'll be right back with Mr. Russ Green. Hello world, I'm Russ Green. Thanks for having me out tonight, Rick. This is a great show. But I'm glad for this opportunity because you know, I thank you sure for inviting me out. This is good exposure, you know, I need it because uh, I got fired. <laughs> I did, I was, I was a consultant for many years and I got fired on the, on the last day of Black History Month. <laughs> and I, I didn't think it was like racially motivated, but as I was walking out the door, man, the white man looked me in the eye call me the n-word yo and I didn't think it would bother me so much but when he looked me dead in my eye and called me non-threatening it just like <laughs> it just ruined my whole day man you can't you can't be non-threatening and get something accomplished that's why Barack's having a problem now you know it's just <laughs> it's just too much man the Republicans are throwing everything out that they can at our president y'all y'all ready for that y'all y'all appreciate that it's really frustrating man because they think they can say whatever they want about him and just sprint to the finish line to win the election, you know what I mean? But the election is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And you're not beating no Kenyan in a marathon, it's just... <laughs> he's naturally inclined to win, he's been trained his whole life, man. <laughs> I, love, I love how they're like preparing our president for the moment, man. But I don't like how they're trying to get him to always say that, you know, it's not his fault that the economy is this way, he's always going, talking about Bush. You know, Bush left the economy like this. Bush left America like this in this state. Bush this, Bush that. You know what I mean? I know the Republicans' whole strategy is like, hey, why are you talking about old stuff? <laughs> Get someone there. I'm happy about this show. I think it's going okay. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be back. Because um, I got to tell my kids I was somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, it's, hard to, it's hard doing comedy, you know, especially when you have kids, because it's, it's hard to live off an annual income of like $15, you know? <laughs> It's, it's, it doesn't make it uh, very comfortable. I love my kids to death. I have two girls. They're five and three. And, uh, I, you know, I, I try to do my best to be a good father. But I hate the questions people ask me when you, because when you, I have girls. You know what I mean? Like, I'm walking down the street. 
And every day people ask me the same question. They go, hey, did you want to have a boy? I'm like, of course I want to have a boy. That's why I had two girls. You know what I'm <laughs> why else would they be here? That's like one of those rhetorical questions like, would you like fries with that? <laughs> of course I would. Or the, this is every day of my life when I was walking down the street with my kids. They'd be like, oh my God, is this your daughter? She's so beautiful. How old is she? Can I hold her? Now, how would that look if I turned the same questions back on them? I'd be like, oh my God, she is beautiful. Is that your wife? <laughs> how old is she? Yo, uh, yo, let me hold her, man. <laughs> Wow, she's a big girl. <laughs> Congratulations, man. You should try for the boy next time. <laughs> that, that always makes people uncomfortable, you know what I mean? Because we're real homophobic as a culture, you know what I'm saying? And I realized that I was homophobic because this dude on my way to work, I thought he called me gay, and it was just a misunderstanding, you know what I mean? Because I got off the metro, and the guy was like, hey, man, do you have a moment for gay rights? And I was like, hell no, and I kept it moving, right? <laughs> and not, you know, not that I'm homophobic or anything, I just didn't want to start my day that way, you know? Just not with the tough questions. <laughs> and he goes, if anyone should understand, it's you. <laughs> like, you just called me gay and I didn't know it? He's like, no, no, you know, the gay rights movement is the new civil rights movement. And I was like, what? I was like, that doesn't make any sense, you know what I mean? I get, you know, you guys are struggling the same way we have, you know what I mean? Like marital rights and uh, military service and movie roles, like outside of Tyler Perry films. You know what I mean? But what does, what does your sexuality have to do with my ethnicity? You know what I mean? I can't be a closeted black person. <laughs> and it'd be ridiculous to refer to myself as openly black. I could be flamboyantly black. I don't have to do the N-word, and that wouldn't be good at all. My name is Russ Green. Thanks for having me out. And welcome back. Our next guest is Mr. Tracy Jackson. How are you doing today, bro? I'm good. Good, 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 man. So what's up? What's I'm good. I'm here. Came out to check out the show. Fantastic. This is awesome, man. This is like Arsenio Hall before he blew up, man. <laughs> <laughs> like this, man. Tell me a little bit about that. Man, well, this is what I like doing, man. Um, I've been doing comedy forever. Mm -hmm. And um, doing these shows right here to go straight to the internet and YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome. <laughs> I hope this thing gets a million hits. And I hope it goes a little further than the basement we sitting in. Fantastic. Yeah. Truly in the middle of the basement. Okay. Yeah, man. I like this, man. <laughs> yeah, DC native, born and raised. Okay. It's hard to believe because sometimes my country accent kicks in, <laughs> throws people off. I got a heavy tongue. Ladies love it, though. Ladies love it. Tell me, what got you into uh, comedy, man? Oh man, I had a brutal childhood, man. Um, Let's talk about that. Man, well, my parents had money, but they didn't share it with me and my brothers. <laughs> yeah. We used to, you know, hot bunk and share clothes, and you know. We had a pile of underwear, and one day I went to school with underwear too big on, and they was hanging over my belt, and kids got to tug on. You talking about a wedgie? That's where it all started, man. And you know, I was that, and that's when I found out what a skid mark was. So. <laughs> it was sad, man. So ever since then, you know, I had to talk about everybody else's mama before they talked about my mama. Right, 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 so right, just right, defense right. mechanism. And do you remember your first performance? Oh, yes, I do, man, I do. My first performance, I tore it up. I tore it up. I tore it up. So I, that's what everybody say, they tore it up. Nobody else was there. Nobody knew me. I was nobody. But, yeah, I, I, I sucked ass real bad. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was good, man. But I went home, I came back the next day. You know, right, right. They told me, hey, that's what you got to do when you're going to therapy. Keep mm. coming back. It was good for my self-esteem. And um, I've been funny ever since. And... The ladies love funny people, man. For real. <laughs> if you never laugh a woman out of her panties, man. <laughs> Woo! And make sure she got on clean panties, too, man. <laughs> For real. You don't want that experience, man. Fantastic. It happens to me all the time. Bro. Fantastic. Now, who yeah. were some of your influences? Oh, man, my influences, man. Um, uh, Red Fox. Uh, uh, Amos and Andy. 
You know, every black and white show you can name, because, you know, we had black and white TV, so pretty much everything was black and white. So, I enjoyed that. Like, Richard Pryor, mm. you know, my uncle. <laughs> he was awesome. Nobody knew him, man. I wish he was here right now, because he has no access to the internet or nothing, man. So, he's never going to see this shit. Uh, okay. I just cuss. I'm sorry. I ain't going to cuss, man. Going on BET, huh? Man, I, man pff, let me tell you about BET, man. You big man. Man, look, BET, uh -huh. it was awesome for exposure and all that. But, you know, they, you know, they see your ticket, they put you on and everything. Right, right, right. They put you in a hotel with 20 other comedians. And that hotel is one room with 20 other comedians. <laughs> That's the part that nobody tell you about, man. For real, man. I woke up one day, had one shoe. And I was like, who got my shoe? And then I watched the show on tape like a year ago and found that back. You know, that dude with my shoe on. And, you know, it was, it was a rough experience, man. That's where, if you watch that show, the episode with me on it, they got me from the end of the So, that's what's happening. You're going to get ready to perform in a second here? Yeah, right? yeah, I'm, I'm going to okay, do a little no something doubt, for no you. No doubt, no doubt. Well, we'll be right back with Mr. Tracy Jackson. Hello, I'm Tracy Jackson. What's up, y'all? What's going on? What's going on? I'm up here doing this show. They tell me that I can't cuss. I can't cuss. I speak two languages, English and profanity. <laughs> and I can't cuss. Ain't no kids in this room either. And that's why I hate people with kids. Cause they always tell me I don't cuss around my kids, but they cuss around their own damn kids. That gets on my nerves, man. I hate little kids. I don't even like my kids. Like, <laughs> Halloween time, trying to go get a costume. Being a baller on a budget. I don't buy the costume. I buy the pajamas. Spider-Man costume, one way. Spider-Man pajamas, well, for months. Awesome. But here's the thing though. My son loves Spider-Man so much, he's just running around the house in a Spider-Man outfit, just running around, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. He runs up under the table, bam, hits his head. And I did what any other parent would do. I laughed like a mug. I laughed. And I walked up to him, I had to check him out, make, make sure he was all right. I was like, look, are you okay, little boy? I bet your spidey senses are really tingling right now, aren't they? <laughs> How does it feel? How does it feel? I'm going to get up and start crying. I'm like, well, you better get in the game. What would Spider-Man do? <laughs> it's crazy, too, man, because there's a lot of stuff, too, man, out here. It's making me angry, though. Making me mad. And as females, it make me mad, though, because... They got breasts and vaginas. Women can get out of any ticket. All they gotta do when the police walk up onto them is bunch the titties together. <laughs> Clap with the officer. No, ma'am, you can go. Thanks for the show. Go on, go. Fellas, if we do that, can you picture us getting pulled over? The cop run up to us, ready to give us a ticket, and we go, bunch our nuts up. <laughs> Problem, officer. It will not go well. It will not go well. It will not go well. I got a knot still on my head about that, man. It's crazy stuff going on. Man. You know, I got, a, I got a mother. You know, pretty sure everybody else got mothers, but I'm, I got the mother of mothers, man. You know, my mother want to do some reverse living. You know, how I grew up in our house, she want to grow old in mine. I was like, we're going to work something out. We're going to work something out. For real. For real. And then this hollow screen thing, you know, I lost my grandfather the last Halloween. It ain't sad, it ain't sad, we found him. But you know, it was Halloween, it's Halloween. It's Halloween, man, man. It was, you know, I was, just, I was counting the money for real. Cause you know how it is when your parents, you know, they, you know, they got you wheeled up, they in the wheel, you in the wheel, man, things are exciting. So, you know, my mama called, I'm like, hold up, let's see how this turns out. This might be a payday. <laughs> Don't rush, for real, because that's how it is, man, because things, things are rough, man. You know, because, you know, I'm doing everything cheap now, because, you know, this recession thing, man, has really got me down. So if I take my girl out, you know what we doing? One drink, two straws. <laughs> for real. And I ain't lying, for real, man. If we out, if we out, it's going to be a race drink in that drink, because I'm going to get the last. <laughs> and I'm just going to keep looking at her eyes, looking at my eyes. But it's a long conversation on the way home about how I ain't getting any. But you know, if you're married and in a long-term relationship, 
your girl turning you down is cool because you got to tell her this. Look, we going to do this thing tonight. And if she go, no, all you got to do is I was just checking because I got Rashida on hold. A lot of y'all going to get that later. A lot of y'all going to get that later. For real, man. And, uh, and actually, too, this recession, though, man, is is has is gotten rough for me, too, man, because, you know, I don't like to go out no more with my wife. You know, I like to talk to her like we first met on the phone and by not returning her calls when she called me. As I said, Tracy Jackson, y'all, peace out. Good evening, I'm Dash, Rick Dash.